The Royal Australian Air Force's Hawk 127 fleet, consisting of 33 BA Systems-built advanced jet trainers, is a cornerstone of Australia's military aviation training infrastructure. Designated as a lead-in fighter, this low-wing, all-metal aircraft is operated by No. 76 Squadron at Royal Australian Air Force Base Williamtown near Newcastle and No. 79 Squadron at Base Pierce near Perth. Its primary mission is to prepare qualified pilots for operational conversion to advanced combat aircraft, including the stealthy F-35A Lightning II, the multi-role F-A-18F Super Hornet, and the electronic warfare-focused EA-18G Growler. Beyond pilots, the Hawk 127 trains weapon systems operators for the Super Hornet and electronic warfare officers for the Growler, leveraging its sophisticated systems to simulate real-world combat scenarios. Powered by a single Rolls-Royce Turbomech Adore Mark Hatron 71 turbofan engine, the aircraft achieves a maximum speed of 1,065 km per hour, or Mach 1.2, a range of 1,207 km, and a ceiling of 50,000 feet. Weighing 5,443 kilograms with a length of 11.5 meters and a wingspan of 9.39 meters, its compact yet capable design has supported approximately 122,000 flight hours as of March 2025, reflecting its critical role in shaping Australia's fast jet aircrew over two decades. The procurement of the Hawk 127 was a strategic move initiated in June 1997 when the Royal Australian Air Force contracted BAE Systems for 33 aircraft to replace aging trainers like the CAC Maki MB-326H and align training with the demands of modern fighters. This acquisition was a collaborative effort. 12 aircraft were constructed in the United Kingdom, while 21 were assembled by BAE Systems Australia at facilities in Victoria, boosting local aerospace expertise and employment. Deliveries began in 2001, integrating the fleet into the Royal Australian Air Force's training ecosystem at Williamtown and Pierce. The Hawk was chosen for its cost-effectiveness and advanced features, including an integrated avionics system, dual mission computers, hands-on throttle and stick controls, a heads-up display in the front cockpit, and multifunction displays in both cockpits. This procurement not only addressed immediate training needs, but also positioned Australia to maintain a competitive edge in regional air power, reflecting a forward-thinking approach to defence capability development. Deployed across its two bases, the Hawk 127 follows a rigorous training pipeline tailored to produce combat-ready aircrew. At Royal Australian Air Force Base Pierce, pilots undertake a 14-week introductory fighter course, mastering foundational skills such as general flying, instrument flying, formation flying, night flying, and navigation, skills essential for jet operations. Graduates then advance to Royal Australian Air Force Base Williamtown for a 20-week course focused on weapons employment, training with practice AIM 9M infrared missiles, conventional and laser-guided bombs, and a 30mm cannon. This deployment ensures a seamless progression from basic jet handling to advanced tactical proficiency, preparing aircrew for the complexities of fifth-generation aircraft. The aircraft's data link, radar and weapon simulation, and mission recording systems enhance its versatility, enabling it to serve as a bridge between the Pilatus PC-21 basic trainer and frontline fighters. Its live weapons capability further sets it apart offering a realism that pure simulators cannot replicate, a feature that has proven invaluable in operational training scenarios. The Hawk 127's role as a lead-in fighter is defined by its ability to replicate modern combat environments with precision. Its navigation and attack system, combined with mission computers and a heads-up display, transforms it into a flying classroom that has trained generations of Royal Australian Air Force aircrew. Recent operations underscore its continued relevance, particularly after the lead-in fighter capability assurance program completed in 2019. Announced by then Defence Minister Christopher Pine, LiftCap modernized all 33 aircraft with upgraded avionics, structural enhancements, and three CAE full mission simulators, replacing two outdated synthetic trainers. 
Cubic Defense Applications Integrated Air Combat Maneuvering Instrumentation, aligning the fleet with the RAF's Hawk T2 standard. This collaborative effort, led by BA Systems Engineers in the UK and Australia, alongside Royal Australian Air Force technicians, ensured the Hawk could support transitions to next-generation fighters, a necessity as the F-35A joined the Royal Australian Air Force's arsenal. BA Systems Australia's sustainment contract maintains high availability, with fatigue testing suggesting the airframe could endure into the late 2040s, though a tentative 2026 withdrawal looms under Project AR-6002 Phase 1A. Enriching its operational narrative, the Hawk 127 has participated in exercises like Pitch Black, a biennial multinational air combat drill hosted in Australia's Northern Territory, where it simulates adversary roles and Han's pilot skills against diverse threats. Its tandem cockpit design fosters instructor-student synergy, allowing real-time feedback during complex maneuvers, a feature praised by Royal Australian Air Force trainers. The aircraft's adaptability was evident during LIFCAP, which addressed emerging training gaps by incorporating electronic warfare simulation and improved data link capabilities, critical for growler preparation. This evolution reflects Australia's proactive stance in adapting legacy platforms to modern warfare's technological demands, ensuring the Hawk remains a linchpin in aircrew development despite its subsonic limitations. Comparing the Hawk 127 to regional competitors highlights its niche strengths. South Korea's KI-T50 Golden Eagle, operational since 2005, boasts supersonic Mach 1.5 performance and light combat capability, outstripping the Hawk's speed and multi-role potential. However, its higher cost and complexity contrast with the Hawk's economical training focus. Malaysia's Hawk Mark 208, with 18 aircraft, serves as a fighter trainer, but lacks the Mark 127's advanced upgrades, limiting its fifth-generation relevance. Japan's Kawasaki T4, with over 200 units, offers a robust training fleet, but trails in avionics sophistication and weapons simulation. The Hawk's compact design and tailored enhancements provide a cost-effective, specialized solution, though it cedes ground to the T-50's raw power and the Mark 208's combat flexibility. In assessing the Hawk 127, its procurement, delivery, and deployment reflect a calculated approach to building aircrew proficiency, while its role in recent upgrades affirm its adaptability. LifeCap's success and 122,000 flight hours highlight its legacy, though its future hinges on replacement plans. Regionally, it excels in training efficiency, but lacks the supersonic edge of peers. For now, it remains a vital asset, its tandem seats and simulated battlefields shaping Australia's Air Force for a complex security environment.